And gun violence is shooting up in alarming numbers across the city of Kalamazoo recently, and now one local church is coming together in a call for action. Mount Zion Church is hosting a walk right now to pray in the neighborhoods where fatal shootings have taken place. Our Autumn Pitcher joining us now live from the church where that march will begin here very shortly. Autumn. Yes, I spoke to the pastor at Mount Zion Church today who believes that gun violence is an issue that extends beyond law enforcement. And he believes that community members right here in Kalamazoo need to be doing their part to help out with this issue. And that's exactly what they're doing here tonight. As you can see behind me here, community members are starting to gather at Mount Zion Church. They will be walking into neighborhoods where shootings are happening to pray for the crime and the shootings that are taking place there. You can see them all lined up outside this church right now. We hang out no more. Longtime Kalamazoo resident Tony Taylor is among many wanting peace back in his community. Every other day somebody getting shot or, or they're getting killed. It's just bad out here. It's just bad. Too bad for me to even be out here. So I stay at home all the time. I just wish everybody just stop and just come together and just say forget it. Because it ain't worth it. Worth it at all. Saturday's shooting at Crom Avenue and East Clay Street marked the 10th homicide in the city this year, nine of which were gun violence related. The first two happened in April, then increasing to three in May, followed by four deadly shootings, almost one for every week in June. With half of the year over, Kalamazoo is on pace to surpass 2022 homicides, which stands at 11. You got church families, you've got schools that they attend, so it's just multiplied. So the hurt and the pain just goes and goes and goes. If we don't hurry up and do more ourselves, that it continues to get worse. Mount Zion Church pastor Addis Moore gathering his congregation to host a walk into the neighborhoods where the shootings are occurring. We'll actually fill the streets with the presence of God, the power of God, and positivity. Make a statement that this cannot go on and be silent. This is happening. Ascension Borges Hospital ER workers are experiencing the high volumes of shooting victims. When the victim or your patient is a victim of senseless uh, attempt uh, to kill, to maim, is always uh, disheartening and uh, that can be an overwhelming factor for the providers as well. Moore agrees the pain is spilling into the community. When law enforcement gets involved, it's usually because something has happened. We want to show up before something happens and give answers and solutions for individuals so they have alternatives. In the past five years, the homicide rate right here in Kalamazoo was at its highest in 2020, racing all the way up to 15 homicides. Now, so far this year with the upward trend, Moore says he wants to continue to do more prayer walks just like this here tonight. You can see dozens gathered all in Kalamazoo for this walk with the hopes to curb gun violence. A Kalamazoo nonprofit focused on feeding the hungry is now getting the attention of lawmakers. Kalamazoo Valley Gleaners is expected to become fully operational by the summer of 2024. It will partner with local farmers who will donate cosmetically imperfect produce that would otherwise go to a landfill and then share it with malnourished people across the globe. Through a grant, Kalamazoo Valley Gleaners recently purchased a massive food dehydrator. Volunteers will soon be washing, trimming, and chopping the produce and then processing it by using that machine. The dehydrated food will then be distributed to churches, missions, and orphanages in 26 countries by West Michigan Relief Agency partners. Republican Congressman Bill Heisinga toured that warehouse today, located off King Highway in Kalamazoo. He says it could become a hub for helping to eliminate hunger in Michigan. The real exciting part is, is this can be replicated around the state, around the country, and it should be, frankly. Um, Canada has been leading in, uh, in many ways on this. There's 11 of these types of organizations around in Canada uh, with a population of 33 million people. We got 10 million people here in Michigan. Michigan is one of the top agriculture producers in the nation. And if we could turn this into kind of a hub of that, I know there are growers out there, and there's probably going to be growers watching this uh, tonight who are saying, I'd be a part of that. Congressman Heisinger says that he will soon reintroduce his bipartisan legislation called the Small Farm to School Act. It incentivizes small farms and local school partnerships to get healthy produce to students.
The Oakland County Prosecutor's Office continues to maintain that this couple, James and Jennifer Crumbly, showed gross negligence in the days and even months leading up to the deadly shooting at Oxford High School. Their son, Ethan Crumbly, who was 15 at the time of the shooting, admitted to killing four students and injuring seven other people on November 30th, 2021. Here's what we are learning today. On March 8th, 2021, the prosecutor's office says that James and Jennifer Crumbly exchanged in Facebook messages in which Jennifer said she was, quote, freaking out because she could not reach their son after school. She said, quote, I told you to pick him up because he's upset and I don't want him to do anything stupid. The Oakland County prosecutor argues this shows they knew about their son's mental distress. The couple's attorneys have argued that it was their son who carried out the shooting, not James and Jennifer. They have called for their charges to be dismissed. Each are charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Professor of Law at Cooley Law School Tampa Bay campus, Jeffrey Schwartz, says he's not surprised this case has taken the amount of time through the court system. Now they have to try the Crumblies, and now that they know they have to try the Crumblies, they're trying to come up with a cogent theory that they believe can establish beyond a reasonable doubt that there is causational link between what the Crumblies did or did not do and the death of these four high school children. That's going to be very hard for them to do. James and Jennifer Crumbly have been sitting in the Oakland County Jail for the past 18 months. Right now, their attorneys have appealed to the state's top court. It remains to be seen if the Michigan Supreme Court will actually hear this case. Coming up tonight on Mid Michigan Now at 10-11, I will have more details from this 38-page motion.